Hello, in this session we're going to talk about how you can create multiple instances of a class. So in the previous tutorial we created one enemy and we actually had one ship and one foreground and one background and one HUD, but the purpose of defining a class is not only to take all of that behavior, all the functions and methods, and all of the data that you'd like to store and kind of encapsulate it in one spot, but it also gives us a really easy way to create multiple instances or multiple occurrences or objects of those classes. So what we're gonna do now is actually create multiple enemies. So let's go to the top here of our app main, and you see that we have one enemy that we had used before, but I wanna change this to create multiple enemies. So now I have E1, E2, and E3. So I have three enemy variables, and what I'm going to need to do then is make this to where I can place more than one enemy down. So let's just take the creation of and the initialize the enemy and let's do it for E3 and E2 as well. Now I don't want them in the same spot so what I'm going to do is actually place the first enemy kind of uh, in the center there. Oh sorry. Um, I'm going to in the Y I want to keep the enemy in, in kind of the middle there. And then the next one, let's move him down a bit and make him further down on the screen. And in the last one, let's move it up a bit so it's gonna be a little bit closer to the screen. And we could also adjust kind of uh, how far off the right-hand side they are. So they can be kind of in, in a different position in the horizontal axis. So we can adjust these various properties of the constructor that we're passing to the enemy class and then the different enemies are gonna be positioned in slightly different spots. So in the initialize, I'm going to create three different enemies and you can experiment and play around with the position that you'd like them in, but you can have different positions for each enemy. And this is an important lesson to learn in that even though the class has defined the position and the sprite information and so forth, once I create different objects of that class, each one of those objects is gonna have its own separate memory space to hold these variables. So the X and the Y position for E1 is gonna be independent of the X and Y position of E2, and the X and Y position of E3 is gonna be independent of both of those. So we've got three different enemies. They're all of the same class, but they are independent in that they have their own memory space and their own variables. Okay, so now it's all set up in the initialize, and just like we updated the old enemy that we had, we're gonna need to update the second and third one and tell them to make sure that they move themselves. And of course, we're gonna to need to render all of these enemies as well. So make sure that you've got E1, E2, and E3 for render. And that should be it, it's pretty easy. Notice we've got the creation of the variable, which is right here. And then we have the initiation, when we actually define where these enemies are going to be. We need to make sure that they update themselves, and of course we need to make sure that they render themselves. So let's run this and see what we get. And here is our game. Notice we've got three enemies coming at us now, each at a slightly different spot, and they're kind of moving at the, at the same rate, so that's, that's a bit boring. We could adjust that. Notice in our enemy class, we have this speed variable that tells us how fast the enemies are moving, and we could adjust that by uh, changing in the enemy constructor, we could change how fast they're moving here, but then that means that all of the enemies are always moving at the same speed. So why don't we actually create a new variable parameter coming into the constructor, we'll call that SP, and then we'll set the speed to whatever the user passes in when we create an enemy. So of course, since now we have four parameters in the constructor, we've got the graphics context, the X and the Y position, and now we have this fourth parameter for speed. I need to go into my app main, and here where I create the enemies, I'm gonna to need to pass it a fourth parameter. Notice if I just try to run this right now, I'm gonna get errors because it's telling me that the constructor for the enemy is looking for four parameters and not three. So let's pass it that fourth parameter and we can now have the enemies moving at different rates. Right? So the first one will move at a rate of four, the second enemy will move at a rate of three, and this last enemy will move at a rate of five. And now if we run that, what we have is all of the enemies coming at us, and you'll see that they're moving at different speeds. So this one here is moving at five, this is moving at four, and this is moving at three. You can tell because it's moving at the same rate as that nebula cloud. Okay, so 
It's a kind of an interesting way of creating multiple occurrences of the same class. Here we have our enemy class, and the only change that we made was really to add this parameter to the constructor so that they can move at different rates. But everything else that we had previously done, we were able to leverage and make use of. We just create multiple instances of the enemy. So here I have E1, E2, and E3. So we added that up here as private static attributes of our main game. Then in the initialize, I made sure that I created new enemies for each and I passed different positions and different speeds for each of these constructors. Notice though that I can use the same graphic because I want them all uh, to be drawn in that graphics context. In my update, I need to make sure that E1, E2, and E3 are all actually updated. And then I need to make sure in the render for the main game that all of them are rendered properly. So that's how we can create multiple instances of a single class. And we call these instances objects. So objects are just instantiations of a class and it allows us to store that information and that behavior inside of a class and then make use of it by creating different objects of that class. Now in the next tutorial we'll actually improve this. What if I wanted more than three enemies? So we'll use a collection and we'll maintain a list of these enemies and we'll be able to add quite a few of them. And we'll get to that in the next time. But that'll do it for this tutorial on how to instantiate classes.